Hello, and welcome to Volume 3 of Don't Plug It In. Save that radio, please. In our last edition, we eliminated our very bad grid coupling capacitor, and we determined that our filter capacitors weren't shorted, but we went ahead and replaced them anyway because they were open. Now, you probably didn't get a good... I probably didn't cover that well enough in the other one, but when I originally turned this radio on and flipped this little guy into the test and discharge position, there wasn't any light, there wasn't any blink, and I checked the filters and they were completely open. And as you saw later when we did the actual test, this, these capacitors that were in there were indicating good condition. We called it okay to start uh, or, you know, carry on. Let's just imagine for the moment that I haven't replaced all the other capacitors and <laughs> there was only three other caps in here anyway to be replaced. So. But now we want to know, is the radio functional before we go in and shotgun all the caps? And we're ready to, to give it a test. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I still have my non-polarized plug. I'm waiting for the ones on order to come in. I'm going to put my ohm meter on R times 1. Actually, I'll probably go up R times 10. And I'm going to check across the line cord and there's no continuity there's nothing there we know and this radio doesn't have an on and off switch here it's got the on power switch on the clock mechanism off board but we'll pretend that there's a switch here and we've gone ahead and taken our ohm meter placed it across the switch and verify that when we turn it off and on we have continuity and this is the actual condition I had when I initially checked this radio there was no continuity on the AC line cord switch is good odds are pretty good we have an open heater when the radio is powered up We should have continuity. Let me make sure we're in frame here. When the power comes in and the switch is activated, here's our switch and our clock. So we turn on our power. 12SQ7, 12SA7, 12BA6, 50C5, 35W4. We have a complete loop going back out the other leg. So there should be some continuity here. We should see continuity. The fact that we don't means we have probably an open heater or open filament in one of our tubes because there's nothing else there. So I'm going to move my ohm meter. Oh, and something I, else I should mention. I try to remember to mention this every time. This says measured at 117 volts line on a 20,000 ohms per volt meter. Okay? Sometimes they're going to say measured using a VTVM, vacuum tube voltmeter. That's important. Voltages measured across a high impedance or across a resistance with a VOM are going to measure differently than they do with a VTVM. A VTVM has anywhere from 10 to 11 mega ohms of impedance, where a VTVM, or excuse me, a VOM, Many of them are 20,000 ohms per volt DC. You'll occasionally see some that are 50,000 ohms per volt DC. It can go all the way down to 1,000 ohms per volt DC. 1,000 ohms per volt is really low impedance. Actually kind of good to use on, uh, if you're debugging, say, automotive lighting circuits. That way you know you're not getting a false reading through a carboned up switch or a rusty corroded connection because you're going to get a real reading with a thousand ohms per volt meter. It's going to load the circuit down. But they're telling us their voltage tests were taken 
with a 20,000 ohms per volt meter. So when we do voltage checks in this radio, we want to make sure we use the correct meter or voltage readings will look suspiciously high if we use the VTVM. The VTVM is basically the equivalent of most of your DVMs or digital voltmeters or digital VOMs, volt ohm milliamp meters. They're all in the 10, 11 megahertz, uh, 11 megahertz, 11 mega ohms uh, impedance class. So let me get my test leads in here with my VOM, my 20,000 ohms per volt meter, and we'll carry on from there. There are days I hate my life. The life of a content producer is not all sunshine and roses. This is the fourth time I am about to attempt to video this clip this piece of it. The first time was when I made the original video that was like two and a half hours long and had all kinds of stuff mixed in. It would have been too painful to try to cut little pieces out and make it coherent. The second time this happened I was just starting to video and the UPS guy showed up and when I got back, I sat down, turned the camera on, got distracted with what he delivered, and forgot to press the record button. The third time I filmed this, or videoed this, I videoed it successfully. Took all the clips on the camera and the SD card and went over to the computer and transferred them all onto the hard drive. This portion, this number two section, was corrupted. I have no idea why about this has happened maybe three times in four years so here we are again trying to remember what I said what I didn't say and uh, so please forgive me that's what I'm saying we have reached the point now where we're getting ready to power up our radio for the first time I hope this all goes better when the next radio arrives. We can do this coherently. <clears throat> I've put my ohm meter across the plug and you can see the uh, ohm meter is working. But when I go on the other prong of the plug, I don't have any continuity. We will assume at this moment that I have tested the switch and the switch is okay. This switch is off board on the clock. So in reality, it's a direct connection from the plug at this point. So what am I looking for here? This is, this is actually what I uh, encountered when I went to power this radio up after I had changed the capacitors out. This is an actual thing that happened to me. If we look at our AC coming in, it goes through our switch, which we've tested. We come down through, we go through the 12SQ7, 12SA7, 12BA6, 50C5, 35W4, and then back out to the AC line. That's our heater circuit, it's all in series. All those numbers total up to 120 volts. However, I don't have any continuity over here, so something is open in this heater string. Now I've taken my RCA tube manual. Actually, this, this one, this radio is not a problem because they have the pin out here. But your RCA tube manual, if they don't have this and it's not on the schematic, your RCA tube manual will uh, give you all the pinouts. You should have several RCA tube manuals of different vintages. We'll get into that on the next video as well. So I'm going to pick up where the power comes in and initially goes to my 35W4 rectifier and that looks like pin number four. Pin number four and pin number seven. All right, okay. So we're down here, I have one leg connected here. My 35W4, one, two, three, four. We have continuity. So we've made it that far. Five, six, 
seven, we have continuity. So the heater in that tube is fine. I'm going to move on. You can pull the tubes out and check them individually. That can be a real chore trying to hold the pins and the, and the ohm meter all you know the tube and the ohm meter all at the same time. You can run them through a tubes tester. This is actually much faster. Uh, once you've done it a couple of times and you're familiar with the process, it's real simple. So we've gone through the 35W4. The next thing on our string is the 50C5. So 85AC on pin 4 and on pin 3, 36 volts. So there's going to be a voltage drop. This is measured from one side of the line when the radio is active. We're looking for continuity. So pins 4 and 3. If I come down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, we have continuity. Pins 3, we have continuity. It goes from pin 3 up here to our uh, IF amplifier tube. Our IF amplifier tube, the 12BA6, we should have continuity on pins 3 and 4. Pin 4, pin 3, we're good so far. From there, the wire goes up here, and our 12SA7 converter tube, the filaments are, or the heaters are on 2 and 7. So we have 1, 2. Doesn't look like anything's there. Let's see. Oh, that's. No, there's 2. Okay, so 2 has continuity. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 should be the next wire going down to our uh, detector, but we've already got an open. We have continuity on one side of the heater, nothing on the other side of the heater. That's why our filament string or our heater string looks open. Now, this actually happened. The way I'm simulating this is I pulled the tube out and put some tape behind there so that the hole was nice and black like there was a tube in it. So we'll put our 12 SA7 in, our new 12 SA7 to replace the one with the open heater. And on 2 we have continuity and on 7 we have continuity. So we should, I won't bother checking the last one in a row because we should have continuity here and now we do through our filament string. So now we can move on to powering it up because we know we have uh, continuity through there, the radio should wake up if everything's okay. We're at 46 volts at the radio, uh, about 50 volts up on the Variac, no sign of life yet. I'm expecting around 80 volts, the radio should probably wake up. That's 80, 90 volts is where they usually pop into life. 73. Power drain is only 130 milliamps. There's 80. Nothing yet. I'm surprised. Let's bring it up. 86. 7. There we go. I probably just didn't wait long enough. Let's drop it down. I'm curious to see. Yeah, it's operational about 80 volts. I've got 100 volts on the Variac, 93 down here, 110 on the Variac, 100 volts down here. So we got about a 10 volt drop through the lamp. Now I'm using a 60 watt bulb, which limits me to, uh, oh, I don't know. 100 watt lamp is about 800 milliampere, so I'm going to guess it's limiting me to about 600 milliampere if everything went to hell. But we're 110 up there, 99 down here. I am going to go full power. And you guys get the football back. Hopefully we 
a better field position. And we'll go up to 120. It's like a Tampa Bay Rays game. They play music in every possible instance, huh? UNHC puts some pressure on the hunter. D.B. Shambartachi. Right foot into it, and they very nearly got it from the right side. Okay. So we have success. On, and it's Griffin Helm who gets to the Rhode Island 45. So punting into the wind. Now what I'm going to do is turn the volume all the way down. I'm going to turn the power off temporarily. Shut it off completely. And we're going to pretend we're going to emulate a dead radio. So we've, we've powered it up, all the tubes light up, and the radio's dead. What's our next step? There's a couple things we could do. Actually, if I turn this back on and let it warm up again, we could go ahead and isolate as to whether it was a problem with the audio chain or the RF chain. Coming into our first audio tube from the volume control, we should have a very sensitive amplifier right here. So, turning up the volume, we've got noise. It sounds like at least our second audio is working. If I very carefully go in here and touch pin two of our first or our detector first audio. Pin one, two, I should get a lot of noise. So that tells me that this tube is working and this tube is working. But we're not getting any signal coming out of the radio. We know that's a lie. The next thing we might want to know, let's say we turned, we had that noise and I swung the tuning dial side to side and I had no response other than some background noise, some static, but no stations were coming in. My next suspect would be my oscillator in my converter tube because if we don't have an oscillator, we'll have RF amplification down through the chain, but we won't have any signal because we won't have our local oscillator to beat against the incoming signal to give us 455 kilohertz. This is probably all repetitive for you guys who know how to do this, but this is for the guys who haven't done this before. So what I'm going to do is show you a quick and simple way to verify that the local oscillator is working. I'm just going to turn the volume down. We don't need that. With, with no test equipment at all, you can quickly determine if your local oscillator is working. All you need is another AM radio. Anything will do. Hear that? That tells me my local oscillator is working. So we've eliminated the local oscillator and the converter as being a problem unless it's grossly, grossly out of tune. But nobody's been into the radio except us. Nobody's been playing with the trimmer. We'll kind of assume at the moment that the, lo that the local oscillator is on frequency. Am I getting any signal into this grid on my oscillator now or my converter the oscillator consists of the cathode this first grid and this second and fourth grid constitute the anode for the oscillator circuit basically they're using the, these two grids coupled together as the anode for the oscillator then our signal our rf comes in from our loop antenna through this tune circuit, this parallel tune circuit here, into the center of these two grids where it mixes with the oscillator signal and then passes up to the anode 
and gets amplified and passes on to the IF transformer. Are we getting any signal here? Is our antenna circuit any good? And here's kind of uh, a gotcha that I'm always forgetting to mention and I'm going to try to remember to mention now in each uh, video I do. You have an AVC aka AGC, your automatic volume control gain control line that comes off of your detector and controls the gain of your IF amplifier and in this case it controls the gain of the mixer tube. That line, that AVC line, runs up here and goes through the loop antenna to the grid of our converter, our mixer grid of the converter. If the loop antenna is missing, you're not going to have any AVC action on this first tube. The radio may still work, but it's not going to be a very hot receiver. It's not going to be very, you know, because you won't be controlling the gain of this tube. This loop antenna, not only is it an antenna, it's the DC path on most of these small sets for the AVC, the automatic volume control. It's a parallel tuned circuit, in other words an inductor and a capacitor in parallel. The second capacitor is here is just a trimmer. This is your antenna tuning section of your uh, gang tuning condenser. This is the oscillator section. There's a big piece and a small piece on your tuning capacitor. The big piece is always tuning your antenna circuit, making it tune into resonance. By tuning this into resonance, it's not only the antenna and the AVC circuit, it's also your first RF filter. It's going to selectively tune your frequency of interest. Let's say you were tuning into 1600 kilohertz. At resonance, the voltage will be maximum at 1600 kilohertz and fed into the grid of the first tube, and it will help to reject adjacent signals because they'll be off the curve of that resonance. So AVC DC path antenna first filter. That and this antenna coil is a very fairly important part. It's an integral part of the front end. It's more than just a simple antenna. Is this circuit working? We're going to find out. We're going to start using our ICO signal generator, our signal tracer. Let me and get I promised that I would show you the little socket for these E11 base lamps. So if you wanted to build your own unit, you could just put it in a base like that. If you don't have one of these dial lamp things, it'll hold it. I had a choice on Amazon of buying the ones from Guangdong, China or the genuine branded Leviton. So I chose the American manufacturer and guess what? It's still made in China. It's the same damn thing, it's just a different color. You can't win. Anyway, our ICO signal tracer has been warmed up. You can hear it's picking up some background noise. So we're going to put this in the RF setting. And what we're going to do is look at pin 8 of our converter. And we will be connected to the ground of the tuning capacitor. Actually, I could pick this up right here on the oscillator coil. So, where's the lead? I'll pick that up on the oscillator coil. So I'm going to go here and here on pin 8 and we're going to check the integrity of our loop antenna to see if that's working. So there's one connection. That's just me touching the probe tip and pin 8 
and I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe see if I can get a stronger signal here. It's going to depend on whether or not you have a, an AM station close by. I can hear there's a station in there. There it is. I didn't have the volume up high enough. You hear that? Basically what we have here is the crystal diode, germanium diode that's in the probe and this resonant circuit of the loop antenna and our tuning capacitor is acting like a small crystal radio. There we go. Make sure you have the wind in a situation like this. Reoriented the loop and the signal is a lot stronger. Blocking is going to be crucial here because Katic is going to be. And I'm just tuning back and forth. Got to make sure everything's right here. The snap, the blocking. And we verified at this point. Let me turn this thing down. We verified at this point that our loop antenna, our capacitor, all the way up to our grid is working fine. It's actually tuning correctly and working as it should. That's without power on the radio, by the way. I think I forgot to mention that. Because if you have power on the radio, you're just going to have so much noise at the front end, you're never going to hear the station. And it's going to be critical, dependent upon which way the loop is turned, depending on how strong the local station is. If you don't have a local AM station, you can do a couple of things. You can build a loop antenna, something like this. This is just a simple loop antenna built on a piece of Lexan. You can build it on a piece of cardboard. Ground one end of the loop and put a long wire antenna, string a long wire antenna up out in the trees. So you feed the long wire to this end of the loop, ground this end of it, this will generate a pretty hefty signal. You'll be able to hear the local AM stations. If you don't want to do that, if you have a signal generator, like we have in the background over there, you can connect your signal generator directly across the terminals and then just pump some RF into that and verify that the front end of the radio is working. In fact, on the day we have our loop antenna in the background. We're injecting a signal from our signal generator, which is set about 1400 kilohertz. And we can see that the tuning capacitor is working correctly as I tune back and forth. And if I go down the low end of the dial, the signal's gone. That tells me the circuit is resonating properly and it's acting as our first filter. Now, if I go down to the low end of the band around 600 kilohertz and tune down to 600 kilohertz on the radio, there it is. So we've proved that our loop antenna is working, our capacitor is resonating it, and it's injecting a signal in the grid of our detector. Our, not detector, excuse me, our converter. So we've proved that that much of the radio at this point is working correctly. Turn this generator down, get this off the bench. I'll be back. Okay. We know that the front end or the antenna circuit's working. I'm going to turn the power back onto the set. Now, you see I have a ground wire here connected. My earth wire is connected from my signal tracer. If you don't have an isolation transformer, you could have a very bad day doing this because that is referenced directly to the line. 
The chassis is isolated by a capacitor, but if you do that, you're apt to have a lot more hum pickup when you're working in here. By going here, it's going to reduce the amount of hum, and you're going to get a lot of hum doing this because that's nothing but a high gain amplifier with a diode in front of it. Okay, the radio's working. We're pretending it isn't. We've proved this part of the circuit out. Now we want to find out if this is amplifying and making it through the IF transformer to the grid of our IF amplifier. That's going to be pin 1 of the 12BA6. So that would be right here on pin 1. And in fact, it says green wire. I hope you're close enough to see this. There's the green wire from that first IF amplifier. And there. And we have a greatly amplified signal compared to what we had at the antenna circuit. So we have some gain coming into the IF amplifier. Now where do we go? Okay, we've proved that our circuit is good from the antenna through the converter through this transformer to pin one now if we had no signal here in pin one I would go back and check continuity on the IF transformer and I would check voltages do I have 90 volts on the anode here I should because the oscillator was running this 90 volts is immaterial at this point because we're not checking that stage we're checking the input of this tube so if I didn't have signal here, wow, it appears the ink on the paper is conductive from the printer. I'll be darned. Um, sorry, sidetrack. Squirrel. We know our IF transformer is good. We know we're fine up to this point. Now coming out of the IF transformer, we should have a crap ton of gain coming to our detector first audio. That's going to be coming again out of the green wire to the detector section here. So I'm going to go to the second IF transformer and check on pins 4 and 5 because there's two sections here and they're tied together. So pin 4 or 5 on our detector. So we want 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, right? Heck, I'm not even making connection. I'm just near the tube. That's being picked up by the probe, just being near the tube pins. I'm not even making connection with them. That's making connection with them. have definitively proved that we have a crap ton of gain in our IF amplifier. All I had to do is get near the pins on this tube and we had a lot of signal there. And of course earlier we determined that our audio amplifier was working. Uh, pin, da -da 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 -da. let's see. Gotta look here and figure out which pin. I know, I'm just poking my finger in there, guys. Pin two, one, two. Yep. So there's proof. I should be doing that with a probe. Turn this volume down. So our audio amplifier is good. So would have been better off field position wise with you. And our radio is working. 
That's that simple, guys. Now, if you've got a stage that's dead, check your voltages. There's almost always something telling you what the voltages should be on the anode, on the cathode, etc. Like on the cathode of our power output tube, it should be 5 volts drop across this resistor because remember the tube is running at about half throttle all the time. It's a class A amplifier so it's going to be drawing current. There's going to be a voltage drop across here. They tell us it should be about 5 volts. So what I'm going to do is take my meter. I'm going to go up here on the 10 volt scale. Connect to my B minus reference. Everything in frame? Yep, it looks like it is. So my audio output tube on pin number one, there's my cathode dropping resistor. And it says I should have five volts. I've got a little over 5.8. That tells me that tube is good and strong. If it was 3 volts across this resistor, that means the tube's not drawing much current. You could have a weak power output tube, or your voltage may be low here. There may be a problem through the voice coil, so on and so forth. Speaking of the voice coil, you can use your ohm meter to check that out. If your circuit is still dead, let's do that. That's something we should cover. I'm going to turn this thing off and get it out of the way. We're through with the signal tracer. I'm going to kill the power to the radio. I'm going to put this on R times 1 so I'm passing the maximum current I can through the ohm meter. And we can take a couple of basic checks. Is our speaker any good? Obviously the speaker is good. Do we have an open winding on the secondary of the audio output transformer? Well, you can't test it with the speaker in line. What you would have to do is lift one of the wires and make sure there's continuity in the secondary of the transformer. Right now you could be seeing the secondary or the uh, the <laughs> excuse me the continuity of the speaker or the transformer or both. So, you would want to lift one leg. We can also go to our audio output transformer input. That transformer is going to be connected to pin 7. And there should be a white wire coming down to R116, or R16, I'm sorry. And let's see if we can find that. So there's pin 7, there's one lead of our audio output transformer. And the other one should be coming from the B plus bus through a resistor to a white wire, which is probably that one right there, I'm guessing. There's pin 7. Nope. Oh, there it is, this white wire. It's on this end. So you can tell from that, because there's a white wire up there as well, this brown wire used to be white, probably. There's our primary of the transformer, and that's working. So that's a quick check to see if your audio output transformer is okay and your speaker is okay. I did that kind of in reverse order. If you started here, you eliminate all the other stuff down the line. The speaker was low-hanging fruit, so I went for it. But if you come in here, this will tell you that the audio transformer is good and the speaker is good. If you didn't have anything here, then you'd move over to the speaker and the secondary and see if you had continuity. That makes sense? I hope so. 
because by checking across here, you're passing a signal through the transformer, through the secondary to the speaker. But if you test it here and here, and there was no noise, and remember I'm using R times one on the meter. R times one passes the maximum current. At R times one, I'm passing 300 milliampers through the probes. R times 10 would be 30 milliampers. R times 1000 would be three milliampers. So to make sure I got some noise through the speaker, I went for the maximum current the volt that the uh, ohm meter will produce. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I hope that was helpful to somebody. I know I'm a little bit rushed. We have another radio coming. The next radio coming is going to be a Traveler 5002. They made a Traveler 5001, which was an All-American 5, and the Traveler 5002 is an All-American 6. It's got an RF amplifier in the front end, so it should be a fairly hot receiver. This is going to be old school. This is going to be all octal tubes. No miniature tubes in this guy. I can virtually guarantee that we've got a coupling capacitor here that's bad, made out of waxy paper. So I'm looking forward to seeing this thing hit the bench. Uh, I hope I get lucky and it's in halfway decent shape like this one was. I know already that the loop antenna has been ripped off the back, but it's there. The mounting tabs are, are gone, but the antenna does exist, so we're in luck there. Um, what else? Oh, uh, I put a note on here to remind you if your antenna is missing, you could make your own antenna. Uh, I think I mentioned this in one of the last videos. There's somewhere typically between 23, 24 turns, somewhere between 150 and uh, 195 or 200 microhenries. It should put you in the range for the front end to be resonant. Uh, what else before we go? Guess that's it. I told you about the AVC being on the antenna circuit. I always forget to do that. I'm going to try to remember to remind people of that because that is an integral part of the front end of the receiver. I think that wraps it up. When the next one comes in, we will revisit this whole process. Oh, no, we're not done yet. We're not done yet with this radio. We're done with this video. The next video will be RF alignment. Now I'm not going to do the old boring method of using the signal generator. Everybody uses a signal generator. Everybody that has one uses a signal generator. I'm going to show you how to align the local oscillator without even having a signal generator without any test equipment we're going to well I'll show you how we do it when we do it so look forward to that chapter it's not hard and uh, that's it for now I'm the radio mechanic hope somebody found this helpful useful maybe interesting I don't know but for now that's it I'm gone see you